Hey guys, Dion here with Your Guitar Academy, and in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at a major 251 chord progression. And we're also gonna be substituting the regular seventh chords in this progression for some of the fruitier voicings that we've looked at in the previous lessons. So grab your guitar, and let's get going. If you've just joined us, don't forget you can head straight to the website to get all the additional course materials, including tabs, chord boxes, backing tracks, all entirely free. And also please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We always love to hear how you're getting on with the material. So let's first listen to a regular major 2-5-1 chord progression. Then I want to talk a little bit about what it actually is. And then we're going to substitute some of the chords for these more interesting extended voicings. So. Let's pick a key. I'm going to go with D major just because it's nice and in the middle of the neck here and it's easy to see and visualize everything. So it sounds something like this. So that's a D, uh, an E minor seven chord, an A dominant seven chord, and then a an, uh, D major seven chord. So the reason it's called a 2-5-1 is because diatonically within this key of D major, we have our two chord, which is E. And then remember that two chord must be minor, or if you're talking seventh chords, it must be minor seven. Then the five chord, which is A, one, two, three, four, five. That five chord is always major, but it's also always dominant seven. And then the one chord, which is of course major, but more specifically, it's major seven. So you hear there, it's a nice sounding chord progression. It's very prevalent in a lot of jazz music and obviously a lot of this neo soul pop stuff that Tom Mish plays as well. So there's many different ways that you can play it and you can substitute many different chords in. But overall, you hear how the sound is a sound of kind of being taken on this journey back towards this tonic. So this one chord here is where everything leads. So two, five, one. And again in a different key, two, five, one. Another key, two, five, one. It's just a very specific sound that I encourage you to kind of get your ear around if you can, you know, this feeling of tension and release. So you could start if you want to by just playing using those standard seventh chord voicings. So, you know, the regular, minor seven chord voicing there, regular. So that's the, the A minor shape, should I say. Uh, then that's an E shape, uh, dominant seven chord. And then that's like an A shape, major seven chord. Um, and just as I say, get your head around it, get, your, get it into your ears and see what it sounds like. So for instance, I could just, if I wanted to, just use a drum beat to kind of, you know, listen to what it sounds like with some rhythm. You see I'm playing two bars of the one chord there at the end. Um, and that just kind of solidifies our tonic there. All right, so let's make this a bit spicier. So let's substitute one of these chords. We're gonna end up substituting all three, but I wanna do them one at a time. Let's substitute one of these chords for one of these previous fruity chords that we looked at. So let's go for the first one. Let's take that E minor seven chord and let's turn it into an E minor nine. So you remember, that voicing there, okay? So we're now, we played it in the previous lesson down on the fifth fret. Let's play it on the seventh fret, the notes of E for now. So that's uh, second finger on the seventh fret of A, first finger on the fifth fret of D, third finger on the seventh fret of G, fourth finger on the seventh fret of B. Okay? So if we play this in place, of our D minor seven chord, within the progression, it sounds like this. Okay, the reason I love this is because you hear the top note, that nine of that E minor nine chord is the same as the 
top note, which is the third of our D major seven chord. So it's a nice bit of voice leading there. It sounds really lovely. So, so let's try that with the drums. Let's see what that feels like going from one to the other. One, two, three, four. One more time. And there we go. It's just a really nice little substitution there for that D minor seven chord. And just gives us a little bit more of an interesting sound. Okay, so let's get even more interesting. Let's now substitute this A dominant seventh chord for one of our altered seventh shapes. I want to try this one here, that naughty 13 flat nine chord shape. Okay, the reason why I love this, okay, is because if you hear the note on top there, that F sharp, which is that 13, okay, in this A7, sorry, A13 flat nine chord, is the same as the top note on that E minor nine chord, and the same as the top note on that D major seven chord. So what that would sound like, it's a bit of a finger twist to this one to move, but it's worth it. There we go. Yeah, that's a lovely sound. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What I will say is in this key, if you find that a little bit hard to get the thumb over there for now, because it's A, you can play an open A if you want to get you used to that so you don't have to, uh, sorry, bring your uh, third finger down there. A bit less of a stretch. Obviously, if you change key, you've got to get used to bringing that third finger with you. So uh, it's just a little compromise for now if you're finding that stretch a little bit tricky. Um, let's hear that in context. We stick this on and one, two, three, four. Now let's try again. One more time. I'll try it with the open A, see what it sounds like. Yeah, it's lovely. Let's do one more for luck. So I love, I absolutely love that altered seventh chord there because as you can hear, it brings us another level of tension in comparison to a regular A dominant seventh chord. It's a real tense dark tonality that resolves us beautifully to that one chord. Okay, so what about if we now want to take it up another level and substitute that one chord for perhaps one of the major nine shapes that we had. So why don't we try this one here? So obviously we're foregoing the root note matching in each chord, sorry, not the root note, the top note matching on each chord here, but it's still a really nice, interesting sound. We have this. There we go, so the top note's going. And it really brings out that nine at the end there when we have it on top of that D major nine. So I'm just using that shape with the root note on the A string. So that's the second finger on the fifth fret of A. First finger barring over the fourth fret of um, D and G, but the fourth finger here is playing the sixth fret of the A string, oh, sorry, the G string. And the third finger here is playing the fifth fret of the B. So again, in context, really nice chords. And we've gone from, Two. Oh, sorry, it wasn't too clean. There we go. So you hear the chords are functioning in the same way, but the sounds and the textures are much, much more, much deeper and much more sophisticated than playing your standard seventh chords. So let's now try that with all three chords subbed in with our drums. And one, 
two. Three. In fact, let me just go a touch low because we're at 88 here, but I'm going to bring it down. Let's so maybe go down to about 80, just give you a little bit more. In fact, I'll do 75. A bit more breathing space for some of these new voicings. Okay, so. Um, one, two, three, four. So that is how we play a major 251 chord progression with some of these more sophisticated extended seventh chords. Um, so yeah, a little recap. We took our E minor seven, turned it into an E minor nine. We took our A dominant seven, we turned it into an A 13 flat nine, big name that one. And we took our D major seven and we turned it into a D major nine. So I'd encourage you to just get used to moving between those chords in the same way that I just did, both in the key of D major, but you can also just try it all over the neck. You can do it, you know, here if you want, in the key of E. You can do it wherever. Obviously this, this voicing here can kind of be a bit of a stretch at certain points in the neck, but I'd encourage you to just get used to messing around with it and playing with it and see what, what it feels like to uh, get under your fingers. So have fun with that and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks a lot for joining us guys. So if you want to head back to the start of the course, you can click here. And if you want to move on to the next video, you can click here. Also, please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment because we always love to hear how you've got on with the course.